Hello. It's good to see you. I wasn't actually planning on seeing you today. Not that I don't want to see you. I totally do. But things just got a little out of hand this evening, hypothetically, um, allegedly. I know it really bothers some people that I misuse words in these <laughs> hypothetical neighborhood gossip videos. So I'm going to do it forever now, uh, hypothetically. And uh, I had a little incident allegedly earlier this evening when I got home. So I I have just completed day three of my new job and um, it's, it's going well, but I have a lot to learn. It's something totally different from what I've been doing for the last 16 years. Um, if, you, if you don't know, I have to mention this in different videos because not everybody watches every video. I was a patent paralegal for 16 years and I decided to go with something totally different. So I have a lot to learn, but I'm working on it and I'm getting there. It's going to take a while to feel comfortable, but I went back to work full time starting on Monday. So you won't see me as much. It's not that I don't think about y'all. I, th I do. I think about y'all all the time. And earlier today I was thinking about you. I thought, oh my gosh, I have to talk about this. I was not going to do a video today, but I had... I had to, I had to, and then I thought while I was at it, I would tell you about some of the other stuff that's been going on around here, theoretically. Um, it may have, it may not, I mean, who's to say? <laughs> so, because I am working full time now, I don't have the time at home to do the things that I did before, and um, I've been getting my kids to do more of the outside work like mowing the yard. Well, also, I don't know if you were aware, but theoretically, I recently was elected to the Homeowners Association Board of Directors for our community, and um, it was really great, and it's that has also been another learning process. I've never done anything like that before, so I really, I really had no idea what it was going to be like. It was just one of those things that you don't really know until you do it. You don't know what, what it's going to involve, and so... I really enjoy it. I've gotten to know some great people around here that I, I had never met before. And I've had to work on my public speaking skills as far as getting up and talking in front of people and making my voice heard. And that's one thing that's always been very hard for me. I've always been kind of a, a quiet person and it, it used to scare me to death to speak up, you know, to say anything. Well, indirectly, in a way, I've had to learn to do that in other aspects of this HOA board uh, journey as well, because, okay, are you familiar with my neighborhood? If not, I think I have a whole playlist of my neighborhood gossip videos, and it's the kind of, it's cumulative. You, you kind of learn as you go, you know? Well, okay, so my next door neighbor over here, we will call him Joe. If you're not familiar with my videos, you don't know Joe. Joe bought that house a few years ago from his nephew, hypothetically, after winning some amount of money in the lottery. I don't know how much, but it, you know he brags about it a lot. I do know that he doesn't seem to have a job, so you know it's enough for him to live on with his two lady friends, Itchy and Scratchy 2.0. Um, the original Scratchy had moved out theoretically. And then she bought the house directly across the street over there. I don't know if she bought it or if she rented it. I'm not really sure, but she still lives over there with her pink Jeep. And, uh, and things have been sort of tense. And so Joe knows that I'm on the HOA board. And for some reason, he seems to think that this is going to work to his advantage. Like I'm going to be in his back pocket and do things for him that he wants me to do. So he's been trying to butter me up. Theoretically, that was the issue I ran into when I got home from work today. So I came home from work and my younger son was in the front yard. The lawnmower was out there, but nobody was using it. And Joe was in the front yard. He had come over to the front yard. So there were two lawnmowers in my yard because he brought his over. See, he saw my electric. I recently got a new lawnmower. I've been using electric lawnmowers forever, but I just got a new one. Um, like one of the battery power self-propelled ones. 
Lowe's had them on sale. That's why I got one. And um, so, of course, he had to go out and get one even nicer than mine. So he, he brought it over. And he was arguing with my son in the front yard when I pulled up. And I, I couldn't understand what they were saying. I got out of the car. And when I pulled up, he came running over to me. Oh, Mary, I'm so glad you're home. I hope you had a wonderful day. Here, let me get that door for you. And he's getting my door. And he's offering me his hand to help me out of the car. I'm like, I'm good. I can get out of the car. So I get out. I said, what's going on? What? I'm confused. Why? What are you doing? He said, oh, I came over to mow your yard. And your son is not letting me do it. And my son was upset because I'm paying him a little bit to do it. He wanted money. He said, I like money. I said, my son, you know, I like money. And he said, Mom, I like money. I said, I know you like money. And uh, and so he said, well, if he mows the yard, I won't get any money. <laughs> so then Joe tries to hypothetically buy my son off. Like, I'll give you twice as much as she's paying you to let me mow it. Just let me do it. Let me show you how great my lawnmower is. It's way better than yours. Not that there's anything wrong with yours. It's just that mine is better because it has this feature and that, and it's bigger and more powerful and blah. Never mind the fact that Joe has like a five foot square area to mow. He could literally mow it with scissors, but he had to, when he's just one of these people that when you get something, he has to get something nicer and make sure you know about it. He has to show it to you. So you know that he has something better than you do. I think it just goes back to some sort of insecurity I'm not familiar with. But I said, Joe, look, I appreciate the offer, but you know, he's, my son's going to mow. We had this all worked out. He's going to mow the yard and I'm going to pay him to do it. You know, and he said, well, you shouldn't be paying him to mow. He should just do that. I'm like, well, with all due respect, it is my family and I will do things the way I want. So he said, you know, I have tried so hard to be nice to you. And I'm going, in what universe did you try to be nice to me? I, I don't know. I've had a lot of trouble hypothetically with Joe since they moved in and then we had the whole thing about the the competition for the award for the best yard which I wasn't even trying to get and he was and he spent all this money on landscaping and all this stuff and he didn't win and he got mad when I won hypothetically and I'm, I'm thinking I don't know when you've been nice to me and you come over here and you brag about things that nobody cares about but you, I wouldn't say you've ever been nice to me you know so then he said, you know, will, will you talk, you know, will you just consider again what I was saying about putting the house in the backyard? He wants to put one of those tiny houses in his backyard. And in his words, he wants to house wayward women. I'm like, do you really need any more wayward women over here? I didn't say that to him, but I really wanted to. And then she came out of the house and she came over and she was telling him, you know, oh, just come back. You know, you can't talk to her anymore. I'm talking about me. And I'm just there like, I just got off work, okay? I'm tired. I just, I, I don't want to deal with this. Like, I just wanted to have my son mow, my older son mowed the backyard earlier today when he got home. You know, like, I, the, the yard is taken care of. I just want to go inside and sit down with a cold drink and just decompress a little bit. But I can't. Instead, I come home to drama, and I really don't want drama. I don't like drama. I really don't. I know it seems like I have a lot in my life from time to time, but I really don't like it. But since being elected to the HOA board, I do find myself in the middle of some drama occasionally. So he said, you know, look, you know, I'm doing a service to the community. I said, I, it wouldn't matter even if I thought you having a tiny house in your backyard for wayward women, as you put it, even if I thought that was a good thing, I still could not allow it because zoning laws don't even allow it. It's not, it's not really in the hands of the HOA. And this has been explained to him. Even if we were fine with it, you cannot have a second house in your backyard. You just, you can't because of zoning restrictions and, you know, it's just not allowed. You can't do that here in the city limits. So, um, he said, look, we don't have to tell anybody. I mean, you know, I have that privacy fence back there and you could just tell people it's like a garden shed or something. I said, but it's not just a garden shed. And he just stood there for a minute. He's looking at his lawnmower and he looks at me and he said, you know, since you, since you were elected to the board, you have just become just the biggest bitch I've ever met. 
right in front of my son. And you are just so full of yourself. You really think you're something, don't you? You think you're you think your stuff don't stink. You think you just better than everybody else around here. Well, I tell you what, you're not and you have no right to feel that way. And I said, you know, Joe, why don't you just run for the board? Why don't you run next time there's an election and maybe you can get on the board and then you can make all these decisions? He said, oh, I couldn't possibly. I don't have time. And I'm thinking, what do you do? I mean, I don't know what you need to, I mean, what, it, what would it be taking you away from? Again, I'm not saying all this. There's a lot of unexpressed thoughts in my mind all day long. I didn't say it theoretically, but I was thinking it would take, what would it even take you away from? I mean, I don't know. Anyway, so he also said, you know, it seems to me that you, you could at least do something about the paving that they were supposed to do. I said, what paving are you talking about? He said, well, I wanted to have our street repaved. That hasn't been done. You know, I've brought that up at several board meetings. I heard him bring it up at one, but apparently he brought it up at some before I was elected, theoretically, and I, I wasn't aware of it. I have been telling them and telling them, he said, they need to repave our street because it just looks bad. There are cracks in the asphalt. I said, well, and what he's talking about is, you know, sometimes if you if you look at a road up close, it, there will be tiny cracks in it. That's what he's talking about. I said, well, you know, Asphalt does that. I mean, it'll get little cracks. You're making it sound like it's just gigantic cracks, but you know, in any way, the, the Homeowners Association is not in charge of paving the streets. That's a city thing. You need to talk to the city about that. We don't, <laughs> the Homeowners Association doesn't pave the streets here. <laughs> That's the city. <laughs> and you just cannot get through to this man. You cannot get through to this man. Um, but he, he actually has a little bit of competition for being the neighborhood busybody. There's a house down the street, and it's this family that I don't know. You know, it seems to me that every every neighborhood always has, like, this one, one there'd be one or two families that you never see them. You hardly ever see them. You might see them come and go occasionally, but you never see these people. They never talk to you. They're just there, you know. Well, there's a house down the street like that, and apparently one of them has, it's like a married couple, and one of them has their mom staying there, and she's an older lady. Call her Miss Nancy or something. That's not, I don't even know her name, but, um, well, that's not, I wouldn't tell you her name, theoretically, but Miss Nancy has been living on our street now for a couple of months. I don't remember how long it, how long ago it was that we last talked. I don't know that I've told you about Miss Nancy. I don't think so. It's not Miss Margaret, because Miss Margaret is very sweet. She's an elderly lady. She's the one who allegedly had her flowers ripped up out of her yard by the, the we just, I'm sorry, we call her crazy lady. I'm sorry, we, we do. I'm not talking about Miss Margaret. No, Miss Nancy is a totally different person. So Miss Nancy lives down there with, I don't know which of the two it is. She lives with somebody down there in this house. And um, Miss Nancy is elderly and she is retired and she used to be a, a teacher i do know she was a school teacher i don't know what grade or what anything i don't know but she is very um interested in community goings on and apparently she had a word with joe about uh, his um some decorative items in his yard she took exception to some of the decorations in his yard See, Joe recently, hypothetically, he he acquired somewhere, is it some, some, like an auction or something, he acquired these decorative little ceramic pigs and put them in his yard. They're just pigs. I don't know. And Miss Nancy went and had a word with him, said, you cannot have those decorations in your yard. And he said, why not? She said, because they are of a barnyard nature. You are not allowed to have decorative items such as that in your yard. It's, uh, it's not allowed in this community. And so Joe said, well, I am best friends with one of the HOA board members. Maybe I need to talk to her about this. Maybe you need to talk to her as well. Tried to make it sound like I was his buddy or something like, dude, I am not your buddy. Okay. I am nobody's buddy. I'm but a lot of people think if you're on the board that if they just buddy up to you, you'll do whatever they want you to do. And like, I, I'm not going to do that. 
So I had to talk to this lady. So she comes and knocks on my door. And um, this was before I started my job. I was at home, and uh, theoretically. And she knocked on my door and she said, ma'am, I understand that you're on the board. I said, that's correct. And they're not supposed to come to your house like this. It is highly inappropriate. I mean, it is explained in every board meeting that you are not to harass board members. You can bring up your grievances at board meetings. You are not supposed to go to board members' homes and do this. I am going to have to be a little bit more firm with people because it's really getting out of hand. So Miss Nancy comes to my door and she said, I don't know if you're aware, but your neighbor over here has inappropriate artwork displayed prominently in his front yard and something needs to be done about it and I said what are you talking about what what artwork he has ceramic pigs in his yard multiple ceramic pigs I don't mean just one he has multiple ceramic pigs in plain view of the street in his yard I said well with all due respect there's nothing wrong with that it's not decor I would particularly like to have in my yard but it's his yard if he wants to have little pigs in his yard he can and she said oh no oh no you must be new to the board because you clearly don't know the rules and i'm thinking well, you don't even you've lived here for two months and what do you know but again i didn't say that i guess i'm gonna have to start saying the things i think and she said well it's not allowed it's not allowed to have decorative items of a barnyard nature in view of the public in this in this zone and I'm going ma'am that that is not a thing um, now if he had actual pigs that would be another manner um, that would, are you saying does he have actual pigs well no but they're decorations you can't have stuff like that here it's not allowed I said yes ma'am it is it is allowed actually now if he had actual pigs in his front yard that would be another matter because there are certain animals you cannot have on your property here and I imagine pigs would be part of that group like you can't have roosters you can't keep cattle on your property you know like in the city limits there are limits to what you what animals you can have and uh, and how many you can have so she said well I, I don't know I think maybe I need to talk to your superior I said ma'am I a superior where, where this is not a store you don't get to speak to the manager there's maybe you just want to come to the next board meeting and she said oh I'll be there I will absolutely be there and I'm gonna make sure you understand the rules and I will let them know about these ceramic pigs and the fact that you aren't willing to do anything about it I said okay ma'am so when is the next meeting so I told her she said oh I'll definitely be there and by the way as she had a, apparently she had a whole laundry list of problems hypothetically theoretically because she's down there at that house all day and I guess she has nothing else to do I did notice that she takes a lot of walks she just walks a lot which is fine you know but she's snooping while she's walking she's noticing all the stuff she said I've seen a lot of cars over there at that house and there's um you know the lady that ripped up the flowers in miss margaret's house and there have been i've noticed there theoretically have been more cars than usual at her house but again i thought i didn't really think anything of it like maybe she's got something going on i don't know you know there is a there's a plumbing truck over there very frequently and i'm starting to think that the, there's some drains getting snaked over there, but I don't know which ones. But again, that's none of my business. I, I don't, hey, you do your thing, I'll do mine. I am not worried about what you do over there or what pipes are getting flushed out. But um, she said, that house over there, a lot of cars coming and going. You know what they're doing? I found out what they're doing. I said, what are they doing? She is doing illegal body piercing over there. Hang on. So apparently the lady over there is, is doing unauthorized body piercing or something. And I said, how would you know that? She said, because I went up there and I knocked on the door and I just asked her what she was doing. And I thought, do you not realize how crazy that is that you just, can you imagine just walking up to somebody's house and knocking on their door and going, what are you doing in there? 
There have been times I've wanted to do that even before I was on the HOA board. There have been times I've been genuinely curious, like Buffalo Bill. I'll tell you about him in a minute because there was something going on over there theoretically. I well, I, I was, I'd be concerned. I'd be worried about my safety, but I really want to go knock on the door and say, sir, what are you doing over here? So she said, yeah, she uh, handed me a sheet. I said, a sheet of what? And she said, a sheet of prices. It looked like it was run off on a cheap photocopier. A prices of what? I asked her and she said, body piercing prices. She's over there doing piercings like ear you know, belly button, whatever, and then there were lower prices down here. You know, she had these down here for the down below prices, and I just don't think that's appropriate. I mean, I can't imagine it's very sanitary. She's doing it there in her house. I said, ma'am, with all due respect, I, we are not in charge of that kind of thing. If you really think there's something going on, you could call the non-emergency police number. You could call... I don't know, the Board of Sanitation or something like that. It's not really something the Homeowners Association is going to get involved in. We don't do investigations like that. So she said, well, I don't know what good you are then. I mean, it doesn't seem to me that y'all do much of anything other than have meetings and tell people there's nothing you can do. So she said also that, uh, there's some unauthorized Uber going on. Now, I don't know how that would work. Unauthorized Uber going on. And I said, who is doing that? And she said, the guy next door. And she was talking about Trip. Now, if you remember Trip, Trip, I don't know this man's name. He's probably in his 30s. He lives over there with his mom and daddy. And I've mentioned Trip before. And in the past, Trip liked to, he had this, what I call the wing-wing bike. You know, it's one of those little crotch rockets. And you... You wind it up and it goes wing, 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 wing. He has one of those motorcycles and he would park it out in the driveway and kind of lean on it and take pictures of himself. And then he would fiddle around on his phone. Then he'd put the bike up and go back in the house. He did that pretty frequently. And then he had the Vroom Vroom bike, which I don't think he ever got it to run. And he spent a lot of afternoons in the driveway trying to fix the Vroom Vroom bike and beating on it with a with a wrench and his dad would come out there and tell him to stop and you know I think he eventually got rid of the Vroom Vroom bike I haven't heard it or seen it but he definitely still has the wing wing bike because he will get it out and now what he does theoretically he will set up a little tripod with his phone on it and he will record videos of himself like he'll take his shirt off and put on baby oil and try to look like he's all pumped up you know he will do push-ups and then he'll sit on his bike and just wing, 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 wing. And he'll make a video of that. Wing, 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 wing with a little smoke machine. And then he puts it away. It doesn't ever actually ride it anywhere. Not that I've seen. He just gets down and goes wing, wing, wing. And takes, do, will do just like a little bit of video for TikTok or something. And then he just puts it up. I don't even know if he has a license to drive it. He just gets it out and, and like wing, wing, wing. And then puts it away and makes this little video and puts his shirt back on and goes in the house and I guess his mama makes him dinner. I, I don't know what goes on over there. She said, he's doing unauthorized Uber. I said, what is unauthorized v uh, Uber? She said, she's, he's giving people rides for money and he doesn't report it. I said, how would you know that? She said, oh, I know things. I walk around this neighborhood and I see things that people don't notice because I'm very observant. And there's a lot of inappropriate activity in this neighborhood that y'all really need to get a hold of. You need to be in, you know, you need to take some action and be proactive and stop letting this neighborhood become so degenerate. I said, ma'am, I don't think we have a degenerate neighborhood. <laughs> We're just regular people living regular lives here for the most part you know, and, uh, well, Joe was kind of standing off. He was in his driveway, and he was listening to all this, you know, and he's like, yeah, you tell her, Mary, and I said, I'm, I'm not, I'm not your advocate, Joe. I'm not speaking for you, so I told her that if, you know, if she thinks he's doing that, then I don't know what to tell you. I don't pers personally, I would not care if somebody wanted to give people rides for money. I don't have a problem with it, whether you do it for Uber or not. 
you, I, I am a very live and let live kind of person. And I told her that. I told this lady, Miss Nancy, we'll call her. Nancy, I say Nancy. We'll call her Miss Nancy. I told Miss Nancy that. I said, look, I am very much a live and let live kind of person. I want you to have your freedom to do your thing as long as you're not hurting anybody. I'm not really worried about it, even if he is doing unauthorized Uber. She's very concerned about people doing things that aren't authorized. She's very concerned about it. And I said, well, I will tell you what I told Joe. Um, you know, maybe you should just run for the HOA board when there's another election and then you can get on the board and you can make these changes and you can be proactive as you say and make these changes oh I couldn't possibly I don't have time for that I don't have time at all I said with all due respect Miss Nancy was it Miss Nancy with all due respect I am a single mom I work, I have other obligations and responsibilities, and I find time to do it. It's just about budgeting your time. You can do it. No, I'm I'm older, and I don't have the energy that you have. I couldn't possibly, I'm thinking you do, though, because you walk around and police the neighborhood every day. You could just run for the, the HOA board and put that into, you know, put all that energy to good use and make some real changes here. But a lot of people in this neighborhood, hypothetically, do seem to be the type that just want to talk. But they don't do anything. We are doing some good stuff. Um, we've been working on the community center, and we're going to take some of the HOA funds and fix up some of the uh, the signs and landscaping around the community. So we, we are doing some stuff, and we've taken some suggestions about better lighting on the walking paths and stuff like that. And, and we're going to implement some of that this year. So we're doing some good stuff with the money, but people don't, they don't see it right away, so they think we're not doing anything. A lot of stuff that the HOA board does, they take for granted. They think the city does it or something, but it's us doing it. And they don't really appreciate what we're doing, but I have mentioned being a little bit more detailed in the, the quarterly newsletter about what we do. So, you know, like spell it out. I know most people don't read it, but some people do. Just spell out like here are the things we've done so far this this year and here's what we're going to be doing later this year. We have these things in the works right now so people can see it and appreciate it, but I don't know. And uh, so... It, she was very unhappy with me, and she basically wants me to, like, play Judge Judy or something and, you know, get involved, and Joe's the same, and I have stood up to them a little bit. I have had interactions with Miss Nancy a couple of times, and uh, one time I ran into her in the grocery store, and she started in on me again, and, oh, I, I said, you know, just save it, write all this down, bring it up at the next board meeting. Oh, yeah, so nothing can be done. I don't know. I, I, I just, I hate to bring it up, but I'm going to have to be a little bit more firm about the fact that they're not allowed to harass board members outside of meetings like this, because I do consider it harassment. And um, Joe is upset, hypothetically, because, what was it? Was it last year? He planted a cherry tree last, was it last year? I think it was last year. He planted a cherry tree in his front yard. Well, Itchy, or sorry, Scratchy 1.0, who lives right back there, planted a cherry tree just uh, like a, not even a month ago in her front yard. So I'm thinking she must, I don't know if she's, she might not be renting the house if she's planting trees outside, but I don't know. So when Joe saw that she had planted the same kind of cherry tree that he had, he got mad and he came over, and this was early in the morning, like my kids were just getting ready to leave for school. He came over to an alarm morning stuff, and he bangs on my front door. And it scared me because it was so loud, and my, my older son went to the door and said, oh, you know, the neighbor's here. Like, that's weird. So, what's he doing here? He was early. And he said, I just want you to know that you have a problem that you need to address right away. I said, what is it? I was expecting him to say, like, my car had a flat tire or something. No. Scratchy 1.0 just planted a cherry tree just like mine. And then he just stood there like, I said, okay. He said, she can't do that. I said, yes, she can. She absolutely can. Why can she not do that? Because I have that cherry tree. She's just copying me. She's mocking me. She's mimicking me. I said, she's not doing anything, you know, 
If she wants to plant a cherry tree, there's nothing you can do about it. It's nothing I can do about it. If she wants to plant a cherry tree, she can. Well, I just think it's very immature. I'm thinking that there are immature things going on here, but I don't think that's it. He wanted me to go over there and give her a notice, like a citation, and order her to remove the tree. I said, on what grounds? He said, because it's bothering me. It's harassment. I said, it's not harassment. This is harassment, sir. But it was another time I was trying to cook out. I got this little tabletop grill, and I was trying to figure out how it worked, hypothetically. And he came to my door then, too. He said, I noticed you were uh, getting ready to cook out. I wasn't invited. I said, yes, yeah, sorry. I just have enough for us you know, making a couple of two or three steaks. And he said, well, that's, that's all right. I just thought you would like this. And he presented to me the most cockeyed looking cake. And he said that Itchy made it. And it was lopsided. It was like sliding off of itself somehow. He said, it's carrot cake. And I said, oh. And there was some icing art on it. But it didn't look like carrots. He said, it's carrots. I said, oh, that's carrots. It didn't look, it did not look like carrots. It looked very phallic. A lot of stuff over there is very phallic. We won't even talk about some of the other decorations they have. <sighs> At least they're in the backyard. You can't see them from the road. Anyway, so he gave me this lopsided carrot cake. He said, I just thought that you would really like to have this so we can, you know, you know, bury the hatchet and just be good buddies again. And that was when he brought up again the thing about the tiny house for the wayward women. I said, Joe, I am not, I cannot, I cannot be okay with you putting a second house on your property for wayward women. It is just never going to happen. So he took his cake and he went back home. <laughs> he said, well, I'm not giving it to you then. Because you don't deserve it. <laughs> Hypothetically, he took his lopsided phallic cake and went back home. <laughs> okay, Joe. So my neighbor next door, hypothetically, Buffalo Bill. Do you know about Buffalo Bill? If you haven't been here, you probably don't. Mm. Okay. I have a neighbor right right next to me. Lives right. You can throw a rock and hit his house from here. Buffalo Bill. We call him that if you've seen the movie Silence of the Lambs. He's probably a perfectly fine person. But he never really seems to go anywhere. He stays in his house. He never talks to anyone. I tried for the first six months that I lived here to at least get him to say hello or good morning or something. Like sometimes when I was leaving for work or leaving to take kids to school or whatever, I would see him out there checking the mail or, you know, just outside to do something. And I would say, hello, good morning. And he would just look at me and he would just walk in the house and he wouldn't speak. He just wouldn't say anything. There was one time during COVID he complimented my hair and it was really weird, hypothetically. He told me my hair looked pretty. And it was very strange because he's never said anything to me. And then there was another time, hypothetically, that he was out mowing the yard, which he almost never did. He would wait until the grass got knee high. And then he would get notices from the HOA in the city that if he didn't mow it, they were going to do it and charge him for it. So he would get out there and mow. And one, one time he was out there mowing. And he came over and knocked on the door because he found part of like a Nerf, you know, the little dart gun things, the little Nerf guns. He found part of one of those and came to ask if it was one of my kids. and It wasn't, but that was kind of weird. He said, well, I found this in my yard and I just didn't know if it was theirs. You know, it was obviously very old, like it, you know, it was covered in dirt and looked like it had been on the ground for a long time. But I said, no, I appreciate it, but it's not theirs. Anyway. So I haven't seen much Buffalo Bill. He's not been around for a while, but he's back. And I didn't recognize him at first. You know, he was gone and the house sat empty for a long time. It just sat empty for months. There was nobody there. Somebody was still coming to mow every other week, but there was nobody living there. Well, Buffalo Bill came back and he had the same car, except it had a bunch more dents in it. 
you know, it had a bunch of dents in it. It has a bunch more dents now, but it's the same car because it had this distinctive bumper sticker on the back. And it had a bunch more dents along the sides of the car, theoretically. And he looks very different. His hair has grown out. It's gotten all shaggy. He looks kind of like um, Forrest Gump after he had been running for three years. He looks a lot like that and maybe 30 pounds heavier. So he looked kind of like that. And at first I didn't recognize him. And then I saw I saw him like head on and I realized, oh, that's Buffalo Bill. Oh my God. He looks so different. Where has he been? I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know how he supports himself or anything because he doesn't seem to ever go anywhere. Maybe he just works from home. I don't know. But uh, for the last few nights, theoretically, he's been out in the backyard. Now, his backyard, hypothetically, has been covered in these big tarps. He has these gigantic, you can get, get those enormous tarps, these huge tarps covering the backyard so you can't see back there. He's been back there, and if you go out in my backyard and listen, you can hear somebody's back there digging in the dirt, like with a shovel. You can hear somebody digging with a shovel, and it goes on for several hours at night, and it's all covered with tarps, and I think he's the only one there. I don't know what he's doing. Theoretically, I don't know, but he is back, and he, he looks pretty, he's very scraggly looking, you know, and I think it's him digging back there, because I don't think there's anybody else there, and I don't know, I don't know why he's doing that, um, so that was kind of weird, and it makes me a little nervous, I mean, it's one of those things, like I was saying, where you want to go ask him, what are you doing, but it's kind of, it's so scary, you wouldn't ever do it, because <laughs> you might not make it home alive, you might end up in that hole or digging, theoretically. And the only other thing I had to tell you, but I had to tell you about Joe coming over here. So he did not mow the yard. My son mowed the yard and he actually did a great job. He did a really good job. He mowed, he weed eated, he bagged up all the grass, he swept the driveway and the walkway and put all my little, he put my garden flag back up and some other stuff. And he put everything away and yeah, he did a great job. I, I, I paid him $10, hypothetically, but he did a great job. But Joe was mad because he, he thought he would mow it for me before I got home. It'd be like a little surprise. And, and then I would be in his debt. And then I would owe him something. Like, I do not owe you. If I didn't ask you to do it, I don't owe you anything. But Joe is just one of these people. He's just so tiresome, hypothetically. The only thing I, other thing I had to tell you was uh, the dudes in trucks, kind of like kind of like Buffalo Bill, you know, they disappeared for a little bit, but then, okay, the other day, this, well, this was about two weeks ago, it was about two weeks ago, my younger son had a dentist appointment, it was in the morning, so I had to take him to the dentist appointment, and then take him to school, because he was obviously not going to be able to get on the bus, so I took him to school after his dentist appointment, and so to get to his school, you come down this, this street, and uh, it's kind of off the main road a little bit. And I noticed trucks, the trucks, hypothetically, lined up on the side of the street. I said, oh my gosh, it's the, tr it's the, the trucks, the dudes in trucks. And my son is looking, he said, you're right, it is. It's their trucks. I recognize some of these trucks because some of them, you just get to where you can recognize stuff, you know. I said, I wonder what's going on. He said, I don't know. You know, I come down through here every day on the bus. I've never seen them before. And they had like, now this I had never noticed before. And I asked my son, he confirmed it. He said he had never noticed it either. All of a sudden, theoretically, off to the side was a, like a little service road. Like a, just a, a narrow little road. Like a little dirt road. I said, I don't recall ever seeing that road before. Has that been there? That's been there. It looks like it's been there. And my son looked at it and said, no, there was no road there. I know no. I come down through here every day. Mom, that road was not here. But it looks, it looks like it's been here forever. Because, you know, like a new road, just it's obvious. You know, it's just been, like, scraped or whatever, graded and, you know, whatever. It didn't look like that. It looked like it had been there forever. 
And it was really weird because we noticed that the dudes and so the dudes and trucks were there and they were kind of gathered around the service road. There were maybe a dozen of them with their little coffee mugs, you know, and their hard hats. And they're all just kind of standing around. And they were standing there almost like they were blocking the road, theoretically. But they let a few cars go down the road. There were these just regular looking cars that came along and I was watching in my rear view mirror and there were cars behind me turning and the dudes and trucks would move out of the way and let them go down the road. And then they would just kind of close back in and they would open up and let another car in and they would close back in. I thought that's weird. I didn't say anything to my son theoretically because he was, he was talking about something else, but I didn't, I thought that's weird. Cause I was just looking in the rear view mirror like that's weird. That's weird. Because so I'm not crazy because my son also said that road was not there. But it looks like it's been there forever. How is it possible that we both missed it and he comes through here every day? It's really weird. So then I dropped him off at school. Had his little note from the dentist's office. And I was coming back up through there and I had to get home and get to work, you know, for my previous. No, I wasn't doing my previous day job, but I had YouTube stuff to do. But I thought, you know what? I have to know. I have to know what's going on. So I get up there and there are no cars coming. There are no cars behind me. So I just kind of stopped and I rolled down the passenger window and the, I could see the dudes in trucks and I just kind of motioned to them and one of them came over and I said, hey, um, what is this about? What are y'all, what, what are you doing? I'm just curious, what's going on down that road down there? And just like the only other time I ever tried to, to uh, had an interaction with the dudes in trucks, the guy sort of, he had on a, a white hard hat, theoretically, and he, he just sort of did like a tip in a hat, you know? He kind of did that with his hard hat, and he said, we're with the pipeline, ma'am. And then he just walked back over to where they were, and that's all he said was, we're with the pipeline, ma'am. And that's all they said to me last time, allegedly. And then and that was just the end of the conversation. Like, he was done. He had nothing else to say to me. And he just walked back over to the other, to where the other people were. So I don't know. I don't know. There was no hole. Not that I saw. But there was a road that I swear was not there before that day. I hadn't seen it. But to be fair, I hadn't been out through there in a while. But my son goes down through there all the time on the way to school. And he said, Mom, that road was not there. I would have seen that. I would have noticed that. That road was not there. But it looks like it's been there forever. I don't get it. We were both a little perplexed by that. So, um, but that's everything going on theoretically in my neighborhood right now. <laughs> I hope things are good in your neighborhood. If you ever think of running for the HOA board, be prepared to... <laughs> you know, be Judge Judy for your neighbors. Hopefully it wouldn't happen to you. It's not supposed to happen. And I'm going to have to start putting my foot down with people. Um, the good thing, one of the good things about working away from home every day now is that I'm not there when they knock on my door. <laughs> I'm not there during the day. That is one cool thing about it. But thank you so much for watching. I really hope that your day is going great and your week is going great so far. I'm tired, but I'm, I'm good. I'm tired, but I'm good. Like my brain is full. You know that feeling when you've, you've had to learn a lot and your brain is just full. My brain is very full, but I'm all right. I'm good. Thank you so much for being here. I really hope that you have a wonderful day and I will see you again soon.